how the building process occurs is curiously dodged. You're only looking at images. What does that prove? I feel you'll have more success reading what they're claiming. All right. Again, let's use Google to see common examples. No cherry picking. I'm speeding this up so it's less boring. You're welcome to press pause or view the websites for yourself. The gravel, sand, and mud settle to the bottom in the rivers, lakes, and oceans. Again, it tells us how pits are filled, but skips over how the high areas receive additional layers over time. Let's see. Here we go. Layers are piled one on top of the other. For an educational web page on rock layers, apparently they didn't feel this deserved further explanation. Then these rocks are deposited horizontally. She completely avoided the hard question. Okay, here we go. Drawings demonstrating over time layers forming on top of each other. Looky, they're even numbered. It's just like that drawing of the geologic column that you have. These sediments stack up vertically. Do your readers not care how the layers buried that monkey? I mean, maybe it's just me, but it feels like this website avoided this on purpose. Like, well, maybe I am the only reader who is curious how dirt got on top of that monkey. Nope, the next one is by Christians, not scientists. All right, let's keep moving. Failed to load. I got nothing to show you. Sediment can be transported by rivers, wave action, wind, gravity, or glacial ice. Be deposited. A bunch of forces take the sediments downhill and become buried. So what uphill force came behind it and buried it? A fast-flowing river deposited heavy sediment grains along its banks. This example is grasping at straws. What they're referring to is the same process that caused rivers to wind. It deposits dirt on the inner arch, causing the river bank to form. Bravo, they have defined a real example of uplift. But this momentary uplift is part of a much larger cutting process that rivers do. Visual examples show river banks are lower than the surrounding ground. These banks cannot be created higher than the water was at the time it built them. Rivers cut, that's the only thing I have ever seen one do. Which of these two examples can you account for in your lifetime? If rivers do create uplift, where can I find an example of B? When you do a Google search for mountain rivers, do we see rivers creating mountains or rivers cutting valleys? Are these rivers filling these canyons in or slowly cutting them out? This website tells us to think about it. So, let's think about it. The oldest pancake in a stack is always at the bottom. The rocks of the Grand Canyon are a lot like pancakes. What they're referring to is the law of superposition. The bottom layer had to be laid first, therefore the layer on top of that has to be newer than the bottom. But you have to ask yourself, in this analogy, who is the chef? Nope. Moving on. Okay, so how do these pancakes stack up on each other to cover that monkey? Pile into layers. Again, am I the only one who feels like websites about rock layer creation should maybe explain the process? As time passes, more and more materials get eroded and settle on older layers. Thus, layer upon layer is formed. Basically, it's a mystery. Thus, they are skipping over it. Sediment are deposited out of air, ice, wind, or water flows carrying the particles in suspension. Erodes, travels downhill, and what magic causes it to get on top of the previous layer? It builds up. Bravo, well dodged. Oh wait, there's more. Each new layer is laid down horizontally over the older ones in a process called superposition. This answer appears more dishonest than simply avoiding the issue. If you recall from earlier, superposition is not a process. It's a law that simply states the lower layers are older than the top ones, like a stack of pancakes. 
Example, a volcanic eruption may create a layer made of hardened ash. This page is a discussion on sedimentary rock, but when we search for common examples of sedimentary rock, sedimentary volcanic ash is only listed on one of these websites, Wikipedia, under the category Other, grouped with and other relatively uncommon processes. Isn't it odd they were forced to pick an uncommon example? Possibly because it's one of the only examples we can account for. Newer layers are at the top. Basically, then some magic happens. The kids at the top of the page sure look happy about not having to learn anything. Wikipedia. And then transported to the place of deposition by water, wind, ice, mass movement, or glaciers, which are called agents of denudation. Basically, it erodes, then travels downhill. Here we find out how the rock layers got way up in the sky. Where the lithosphere moves upward, tectonic uplift, land eventually rises above sea level. Okay, let's go through this and see if this is worth consideration. This is a common drawing you can find on the internet to demonstrate this process. We will rewind time and put it into motion. Animals are carried to the bottom of the ocean and buried in eroded sediments. Time passes. Tectonic uplift. And we have today. Yep, that's it. Well, what does this mean if this is true? We are in the past. This body of land we see here represents the land in the diagram. This starting point is not underwater, so no fossils could be buried here. Then it starts to erode, burying dead animals in the underwater sediment layers. Then, plate tectonics pushes up the first section of land. Because this is the first section of land, it would contain the first fossils. So, we could say, the oldest fossils would be found here. Then, over time, more layers are pushed up, each time containing newer fossils than the previous. Finally, we get to today, and the most recent fossils will be found here. Fossils dated oldest to newest, the further from the center you go. Trouble is, this directly contradicts your geologic column, which dates from low elevation to high elevation. Or in other words, instead of a geologic column with the oldest pancake at the bottom, you would end up with a geologic expanse like this where the newest fossils are found exclusively near the ocean. And that contradicts data found on every fossil map. It contradicts Pangaea, which states the continents were already formed at the time they split up. It denies the existence of rock layers that do not contain sand or ocean life. It denies the existence of multiple coal strata buried in the rock layers. It denies the existence of many coal mines that are below sea level. It denies the existence of fossil footprints, which would only form above sea level. More importantly than anything in this video, it contradicts what I've seen with my own eyes. A video. This is a pleasant change. Gap in here. Now, how might those have formed? Well, I'll show you. Perfect. Maybe he will explain how the layers got on top of each other. Some wet sand, some water. No, he just dumped it in. Nonetheless, we're forming a layer of mud on top of the sand. Now, event number two. I'm going to add some more sand. This time around, he declared he added the second layer. Is he trying to tell us he added the rock layers on top of each other? He didn't mention how nature could have done it. This next website didn't mention it. Moving on. Deposited through wind, water, ice, and or gravity at different intervals of time and compacted on top of each other. Standard dodging answer. Gravity pulled it down and it ended up on top. But wait, they have a way to recreate this process at home. You dump in all of your dirt. You dump in all of your sugar, you dump in your sand. 
So, I hate to ask, but was it you? Were you the one that buried that monkey? This next website didn't mention it. Moving on. New sediments were deposited over them by advancing and retreating seas. Advancing and retreating seas? I've never seen such a thing in my lifetime. The drawing shows the Grand Canyon. Are they implying the seas advanced to nearly the highest point in America? I mean, that idea sounds like another story I know. Nope. All right, let's finish this up and revisit this Bob's Pixels later. We are nearing completion of this part of the video, I promise. Moving on. Another experiment skipping over how the layers stack. You go create your own sedimentary layers. Oh gosh, sorry. Didn't mean to offend. Over long periods of time, those layers build up into much thicker ones. Dodge the complication. This next website is the same one we were just at. When over a long time, layers and layers of sediments get deposited on top of each other. Once again, a website dedicated to the education of rock formations, but unexplainably dodging the science behind it. Blah, blah, blah. If you want real science, you're going to have to check out an actual science book. Let's. Sedimentary rocks occur in layers called strata. About 75% of all rock exposures on the continents are sedimentary rocks. If they are the vast majority of rocks, then this section is important and should contain a lot of detail in the process. The photo shows rocks suffering from the effects of erosion high in the air. Too bad the photo is not of the creation process. Recall the rock cycle, which shows the origin of sedimentary rocks. Let's scope that rock cycle out real quick. You can see the existing rocks weather and deposition down into the ocean. Then, it turns into layered rocks at the bottom of the ocean. Then, without explanation, it all appears on top of the land. This section does not have what we are looking for. Let's go back to the sedimentary rock section. Weathering begins the process. Next, gravity and erosional agents, running water, wind, waves, and glacial ice, remove the products of weathering and carry them to a new location where they are deposited. How gravity and erosion deposits, which are strictly downhill in nature, end up in the complete opposite location does not appear to be a discussion of an earth science education book. I'm going to summarize the rest of this for speed. The paragraph continues explaining that particles turn into rock. The next paragraph basically states it again. It erodes in a downhill fashion, collects in the lowest places. Next it states these downhill only processes are never ending and continuous. Oh wait, here's that dodging answer we have grown accustomed to. As piles of sediments accumulate. I don't know they are dodging, it's more likely they just don't know the answer. That would be an acceptable statement, but this book doesn't provide it. If earth science education is the real goal of this 13th edition school book, shouldn't this challenge be welcome to the students? Why hide it? They explained that sedimentary rock is 75% of the rocks we see on the planet. It's a bit concerning that an earth science book fails to understand 75% of where we live. And they hide that fact. When I look at the earth, all I can locate is evidence of erosion downhill. With only downhill forces acting on the area, how do you think these rock formations got here? I would be forced to assume the area was higher in the past, probably reaching the top of the rocks. And in the future, this area will continue this downhill only pattern. When I look at this truck, in the past, I would assume it looked newer too. And in the future, I would assume it will eventually meet its end. An hourglass shares this downhill only pattern. What happens to it without an alternative force acting upon it? 
It's curious this book fails to mention an observable alternative force acting upon the earth, yet refers to erosion as never-ending and continuous. Let's check out that rock cycle again. Everyone has witnessed erosion and mud settling to the bottom of the low places. According to Wikipedia, prior to the recent addition of man-made dams, the Mississippi River has been dumping 400 million tons of the United States into the sea every year. This 400 million tons is only pulled from 1.15 million square miles of land. If you calculate that out, it is debatable to say that every square mile of land on the earth, every year, loses 347 tons of land matter. Let's adjust the thickness of these arrows to represent how much effect these erosion processes have on the earth. This next process possibly happened far in the past, and I would expect it caused violent earthquakes. How much sediment do you expect the mountains that are riddled with violent earthquakes are currently producing? How about volcanic eruptions? How much material are they producing where you live? After adjusting this diagram to be a more honest representation of their effect on the Earth, does it still look like a continuous cycle? To me, as much as the authors of this book do not want to accept the obvious, the Earth is headed to the same fate as this hourglass. Unless something new is brought to the table, I have to conclude the mechanisms that built the mountains happened in the past and are not currently occurring. Let's not give up just yet. How was it formed? Yep, that's the question. The truth is that no one knows for sure. Wow, wow I wasn't expecting that. The sediments that covered the roots of these ancient mountains were deposited by a series of advancing and retreating ocean coastlines. What does he believe caused them to advance and retreat? Melting and freezing of the polar cap. How do we know this? Well, the fact is that most of the rock in the Grand Canyon is composed of sedimentary rock which can only be formed at the bottom of the ocean or in shallow coastal plains. I am blown away. He actually attempted to address the mystery instead of dodging it. And I love the fact he admitted he didn't know. Let's scope this out. If you search geology sea level change, you can find graphs showing this theory is acknowledged. If you search Grand Canyon fossils, you can see water critters lived there. Water critters, buried in vast flat layers, would have to require vast amount of water. Are you saying it's a match? We could simulate this with online tools. Is this a sea level change simulator? I know, the internet. Let's do some quick math, then crank the water level to a point where the Grand Canyon is covered in water. Well, that's strange. I would expect maybe mountain goats could survive, but it seems like everything else would be extinct. Too bad there wasn't something like a boat to save breeding pairs for future generations. The Earth Science Book breaks geology into two eras. The first era is the 16th and 17th hundreds. Here, James Usher's catastrophism was the predominant theory. Catastrophists believed that the Earth's landscapes had been developed primarily by great catastrophes. The second era began in the late 1700s. That's when James Hutton stepped in with uniformitarianism. This means that the forces and processes that we observe presently shaping our planet have been at work for a very long time. Why is this theory accepted by the book authors? Hutton persuasively argued that weak, slow-acting processes could, over long spans of time, produce effects just as great as those resulting from sudden catastrophic events. Unlike his predecessors, Hutton carefully cited verifiable observations to support his ideas. Keep in mind, Hutton's fame comes from his explanation on how the rock layers were built. That's why they're talking about him. What were these verifiable observations that built the rocks up, like in the drawing? 
For example, when he argued that the mountains are sculpted and ultimately destroyed by weathering and the work of running water, and that their wastes are carried to the oceans by processes that can be observed, Hutton said, We have a chain of facts which clearly demonstrates that the material of the wasted mountains have traveled through the rivers. In other words, erosion destroys, and water carries that downhill to the ocean. What more can we require? An uphill example? Nothing but time. Were the rock layers created by long periods of time? Or were they created by something more sudden and catastrophic? Let's not cherry pick photos. Let's look at common examples for clues. Photographical clues and curiosities. We will start with fossilized animal tracks. Take a good look at the rock layer these tracks are planted in. Notice the preserved detail. Can we find a match to common natural ones? 